go. People will turn it around when they're ready and they're in enough suffering to do so. Now, when we are like really deep, because I was so deep in that scene and everything, you feel like the deeper you get, the further you get away from where you want to be. But in truth, what I've seen so much over the last years is that people who think they're really far away from this place they want to be, it's generally just around the corner. It's much closer than they think. And it's like, it's not like every single facet of life needs to be turned upside down. There's a few cogs that need to be turned, which just make drastic difference in someone's life. So yeah, I'm fortunate that it happened in such a short time. But I mean, that's why when we were running the physical center, programs were eight to 12 weeks because we found in that time we could really get someone turned around. Um, Cause yeah, we were just going to make it one session. And everyone was going to do it the way I did it. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, uh, we, we, we need to, cause even, cause you never know what's going to happen. Cause obviously I stopped using drugs and felt great after that. But then by continually keep going and doing the work, because like I said, just the stopping of drugs isn't the end of the work, you know, um, by going through that work, I then just found out that this is what I wanted to do with life and I started finding meaning and purpose. Yeah. And this is where some people can get tripped up in this world, yeah? Because what happens when you... when you Here's, here's the thing. Like if you imagine three steps, like whether it's mental illness, addiction, whatever it is, um, address these past traumas, address these negative patterns and these emotions that we have stored throughout our life. That's probably the most important, okay? Foster, you need you need to surround yourself with people who are lifting you up and not bringing you down. So mm. you need to be very, very aware of your connections. Yeah, so connection is so important as us human beings and we want the right connection. Um, and the next thing is finding some sort of meaning and purpose in our life. And that doesn't have to be, I'm going to open up a fucking center and help people. It can be, so I'm going to dedicate myself to being a great dad or I'm going to get involved in a local sports club and foster those kids or whatever it is. But we need some sort of meaning because especially with drugs or alcohol, when we first stop, recovery which i fucking hate that word but mm. recovery right recovery is like our sole purpose right so all we're doing is like i'm getting clean and i'm staying clean and our family and friends and like people who are there they're like clapping us along and we're getting cheered and we get all this positive uh, affirmation from it and we're really fired up and excited and i see so many people slip up because they don't find any other purpose and what happens whether it be a few weeks a month a couple of months what will happen all of a sudden, people stop cheering now. It's like you've been clean for a couple of months. You know, it's like now that purpose that you had, if you don't find some other purpose, this is when people can now fall back into uh, old traps because their purpose became about being clean. Now I'm clean. Now what? Mm. Then we feel that there's like a void left there. And if we don't address that, we can get sucked back into these old patterns. Mm, that's such a good point. Um, you know, and I, I think uh, you often find that with trauma work, people get very... Uh, uh, addicted to this notion of there's still something down there. There's still something down there, you know, and they go and go and go, which I think is good. But I think your point is, is even more um, right. You know, we are fundamentally future oriented and it's like, we can do the work, but we simultaneously need to integrate it. And there still has to be something else driving us beyond, Oh yeah. Or I'm healing myself. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. I think there's, there's, you do need to go back and do that work and you also have to have that future pulling you. And then you've also got to have this awareness. Yeah. So you can call it tools if you want, but this is awareness in the moment of when my thinking is getting off track and when I can pull it back on track or when I have an emotional disturbance that I can sit with and deal with, because then we stop accumulating, right? That's what, that's, that's the whole thing. Look, we don't want, it's like, you can say, oh, yeah, I went to see a psychologist every week for two years. I'm like, that's not a success. Yeah. <laughs> that's so much more than we needed, right? Because it's like it, you want to give people the tools so that they don't come back. Mm. Yeah. yeah, because it's one thing. It's like I let go of all this baggage and went back to life and accumulated more baggage. Now I've got to go and address that baggage. And it's just constant back and forth, back and forth. But I think if you can help people with their trauma, but also teach them the ways ways to be with their emotional body, which is the most important and not escape it. Let, work with that energy, not against it, not suppressing it, not an escape from it. And also noticing our thought patterns, which requires, it requires an awareness. And normally when you do the trauma work, you gather this anyway, because normally we're not aware of our thoughts and emotions. All we care about is what's happening out here, right? We're, we're obsessed with what's coming in through the senses, right? But that's just one thing. So you'd imagine we, we are aware of three things in this life. We are aware of events, which is things coming in through the senses. We're aware of thoughts. We're aware we have this voice up here that doesn't shut the fuck up. <laughs> and, and we're aware of our emotions. We're aware that we feel things. When I feel fear, I'm like, oh shit, I'm, I'm feel fear. So we're aware of those three things. And most people just care about events. 
Yeah. So what happens? They get a disturbance in their thoughts or emotional body. Then all they want to do is change external circumstances to make this stuff feel better. And then and the problem is they do it and it works to an extent, but it mm. hasn't dealt with the actual cause. So then after a while, all this stuff gets stirred up again. I'll change again. Stirred up. I'll change again. And it's just this never-ending thing that goes on. Whereas people, when you normally go and do the trauma work, you realize, oh, my whole reality is filtered through these thoughts and emotions. If I start to work with them and be in relationship to them then the way i perceive external reality starts to change you know the amount of people that i've worked with it's it's so hilarious and they're complaining about their like their wife that she has this this and this and blah 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 we do some work on their emotional baggage around relationships or their mummy issues or whatever it is they come back the next week how's things going with your wife oh mate she has changed <laughs> she's a completely different person i'm like <laughs> I'm like, she's so different. You're seeing her differently. It's so funny. Yes. Um, <laughs> That's brilliant. So, so I think having the tools and awareness because it's like um, watching a movie. If I'm watching a movie, I realize that that movie isn't me. Yeah. And even though I get caught up in the emotions of the movie, I still have this distance from it. So we see external reality like that. Like when I look at um, two people across the street, I'm like, That's not me. Yet, when I look at my thoughts and emotions, they're so close. Yeah, because the thoughts are kind of up here. Emotions are generally heart-based into the stomach. I just identify with them as me. As soon as I'm identified with them as me, I can't be in relationship with them and I can't actually work them. Mm. Yeah, and this is what it's like. This is, I suppose, what being unconscious is all about, what it's acting out unconscious thought and emotional patterns. So as soon as I then start to separate myself and see my thoughts and emotions as something out here as opposed to in here, I can be in relationship and I can work with them. Right, and that's that's what we're talking about, like tools in the moment that we can deal with, so we don't accumulate any more baggage.